All right, let's test the MacBook Air versus MacBook Pro versus the best silicon from AMD and Intel. Wolf, let's do it. And make sure you subscribe because there's plenty more of this stuff to come. Right, Teleoda champs, now it is MacBook Air time. I've tested the MacBook Pro. I'm going to do a comparison. I'm going to do a thermal test, the performance test between the MacBook Air and the MacBook Pro. Of course, these are the new Apple M1 chipped MacBooks. And oh my God, I just done an Adobe test on this MacBook Pro 13 and wow. It just beat AMD system 4800U, Intel's G, 11th generation CPU, and it wasn't even running native. All right, the metal part is native, but it was like twice as fast rendering in Premiere Pro, and it's not native, it's just nuts, all right? So I'll get that out of the way. We will concentrate on this MacBook Air. Quick unboxing, then we're gonna get into the thermal and performance test compared to the MacBook Pro, and of course, the XPS 13 with the latest 11th generation CPU and latest AMD 4800U. We'll see which one throttles more, how they perform on under sustained load. What, you know, what sort of haircut do they get after they've been running for a while? Whoa. So I guess the box is not much changed compared to say the Pro. The Pro, completely different. This, you wouldn't even know that's an Apple Silicon Mac really, would you? But anyway, oh man, that was a tight one, fellas, ladies, a tight one. So there we have it. The MacBook Air in all its glory here. Of course, standard literature, some decals in there. And we have the, you know, the power cable. And a key difference here is the 31 watt charger. It's actually a lot smaller than the MacBook Pro. We'll see what sort of part that plays. Obviously, it doesn't need as much power. Even though, really, they're probably just the old power supplies from the old MacBook Pro and MacBook Air. Now, let's do the shootout. We can see the Cinebench scores already there. Same conditions. I've done a Cinebench run on all of them. Multi-core, of course. And now we're going to see how hard they go after throttling. It's all right doing one good score, but can you back it up? Can you do it after, you know, 10 minutes? I'm going to see if there's any difference between the MacBook Pro and MacBook Air. One's got a fan. One doesn't have a fan, of course. And we're going to see how these Intel systems and the AMD on the left go as well. So on the left, we have the Lenovo Slim 7. That has an AMD 4800U. 15 watt part and that got 9971 that's its multi-core score in Cinebench that is the fastest of them all but will it be the fastest after 10 minutes let's see sorry for the change in audio my audio is stuffed up but the next one over is the M1 MacBook Air and that got a score of 7430 the one next over from that is the M1 MacBook Pro which is 7792 they both eight gigs of RAM and then the one next to that is the XPS 13 2 and 1, which has Intel's 11th generation 1165G7, and that got a score of 5037. Now, please let me know which one you think is going to be fastest after all the boosting's over and, you know, they start throttling a bit. Which one's going to be the fastest or will they throttle? Maybe some of them won't. We'll find out. Now, I want to know in the comments, do you think there will be a difference between the MacBook Air and the MacBook Pro before the results are in? And do you think the AMD will still be on top after, you know, 10 minutes, like after the boost is over? Will it still beat the Max? I can already hear the fan of the AMD. I can hear the fan a little bit from the XPS but the max no fans at the moment by the way cinebench macbook pro 16 8999 so the amd 4800u on the left is actually faster i will do the same test on the macbook pro and tell you the results of that the macbook pro 16 i'm talking about in the middle on the right the macbook pro how much further in front it is than the macbook air and you can see there on the left the amd is just killing it there and I think the Intel is like one run behind at the moment. So, ah, it's very interesting. The AMD doesn't seem to be slowing down and it's still going hard. So I can't actually wait until they do the M1X. So for the MacBook Pro 16 or the MacBook Pro 13 4 Thunderbolt 3 model. And can you imagine, probably have eight performance cores. It might have 12 GPU cores. It's just going to be an absolute monster. All right, so now let's do the same test with the MacBook Pro 16. Goes from 9,000 to what? We'll find out. Okay, so, well, the MacBook Pro 16, virtually the same score as it was on the first run. So, 9,000, 
9,000 after a few runs and for 10 minutes actually and I was very surprised by that that's interesting I've got to say the 5600M models they're very consistent the cooling is a bit better and it can sustain loads for longer I mean the Cinebench score you can get on this compared to the 5500 graphics is better it's more consistent it's like 200 points higher and it's just more consistent so I'm shocked there right so the test is finished let's measure the temperature and the temperature after the run was the AMD was 37 degrees the MacBook Air was around 37 as well 39 degrees for the MacBook Pro and the hottest was actually the XPS 13 that was around 42 degrees but that is the smallest tightest package so yeah none of them were overly hot that they'll burn you or anything like that so that's good right so what did we come out with here and as you can see from the left the 4800u that is minus 1178 so that throttled the most but still it was clearly faster than any of the other ones at full speed then we have the macbook air that has no fan that throttled by 779 points so 6651 still good now the macbook pro which does have a fan virtually didn't throttle that's just the difference in runs like minus 10 it went hard and it never throttled at all so that is awesome and then we have the 11th generation intel which throttled by 747 down to 4790 and there you can see the respective full scores on the top so the AMD throttled down the most, but it didn't matter. Its scores were still higher. MacBook Pro with a fan did not throttle at all. The MacBook Air only throttled a little bit. And the Intel, well, that is the most thermally limited package there. It's not because the chip's so hot. It is the smallest package. And yeah, it's not that bad, to be honest. I'm quite impressed with all of them in that regard. Considering the MacBook Air does not have a fan, it throttled the same amount as the XPS 13 that has the 11th gen CPU which has a fan, has active cooling and it went down by the same amount of points virtually. So these Apple Silicon things are amazing. Even with no fan, man. Plenty more to come. Say subscribe. Catch you in the next one. Tally ho.